Good evening, my friends. This is Paul, and tonight I'm going to be reviewing to you Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics for the Nintendo Switch. Now, just a disclaimer before I begin, it is very hot where I'm from, and I am not a heat person, as most of you probably know. So, yes, there is a fan in the background. Yes, both of my windows are open, because otherwise I will probably faint. I actually walked into a door today because I was so hot and my mind was so delirious and I am usually extremely aware of my surroundings so such a thing is just unheard of for me I hope you will be patient with the noise I mean the the background sound of the game is probably gonna drown it out anyway but just in case it doesn't I want you picky people to know that ahead of time so thank you so first off what a lot of you probably don't know is that this is actually a reimagining of a DS game, simply called Clubhouse Games. And while I did complete it back in the day, I chose not to review it for a couple of reasons. One, it was a board and card game collection. And two, I did not have a DS capture card, still don't. But back then I did all of my reviews orally without footage. And I figured, I don't know, that just seems so boring of a game to review with just words like i think people would want to see what the game is about rather than just me saying hey guys check out these board games that's pretty much what it is here but what makes this significantly better than the ds version is the nintendo polish now it's really hard to explain if you're not used to how nintendo makes games but basically they take something that other companies would make super complicated, like where they'll say, please read this user agreement licer license thing, or have you sign into an account just to play a silly game. In this game, they're just like, hey, you wanna play? Cool, tell us your name, tell us your age. You know, it's super simple, easy to pick up, and they have really cute little skits at the beginning of each game where a couple and their two kids will explain how each of the games are played, just in case you don't know how to play. And you also are able to unlock little extras as you go along, such as having a deck of Mario-themed playing cards. And I think you can also unlock extra mini games that I am not sure of because I am not a completionist. It says 51 worldwide games in the title, so why would they lie and say, just kidding, there's actually 53. That seems like bad advertising to me, but who knows. So most of the games are pretty much what you would have expected from the original Clubhouse games or pretty much any mini game collection on the Wii or DS. What sets this one apart is that it's not just card and board games. We're talking pretty much any amazing pastime that people all around the world like to do. So you've got the usual stuff, like chess, checkers, solitaire, technically it's called Klondike, but that's what most people call it. But you've also got a few surprising ones on here, such as golf and even fishing. Since this is on the Switch, Nintendo was able to add a couple of interesting features to take advantage of the system itself. If you recall the Wii U tech demo back in the day where it showed off how you could be playing, I think it was... Um, backgammon and like shake the gamepad to clear away the pieces well that game whatever it was that i'm forgetting the name of at the moment is here and you can in fact use the touch screen to slide the pieces there are also games where you can put a bunch of switches together super mario party style and slide your fingers across them to create new arenas and sometimes even exclusive features that aren't available in standard single player or multiplayer modes. There are also some games that use motion controls, but thankfully I only saw like maybe two that use them, so don't feel like this is another Wii cash grab. Every game to some degree uses the touch screen, but you don't have to. Thankfully, since this is not the DS, it's not a one-point touch Color system change. like games on the DS were. You can actually have multiple Last fingers card. on the screen Draw at card. once, which is especially useful when you're playing the piano, which, wow, that was a nice little odd bonus, just a piano. Reverse. And you can have multiple Reverse. keys being played just like you would on a regular Again. piano, because who only taps one key at a time, Last unless card. you're me? Draw two. These games have multiple difficulties to them if you're playing single player so you have a chance to go through normal hard amazing Finish. and impossible computer player difficulties 
There's also apparently extras that you can unlock, but the only ones I discovered were the Mario-themed playing cards that you're seeing right now. Also, people will be periodically invited to a globe to try to organize the games a little bit, because at first they're kind of just there. You just pick a game and hope for the best. But if you're the type of person that's like, I like strategy games, I like luck-based games, then these people will show up on the board and say, well, if you like games that are based on complete dumb luck, then we've got the game for you. And I like how it sort of has an all ages vibe to it. It means that people of any age will find something of enjoyment. In fact, I think the game was actually intended to have a universal audience feel because some of the games are actually explained by children, some games are explained by the whole family, and some games even have the adults facing off against the children to show that some are the kind that can be enjoyed by any age. So 51 different games with multiple genres, multiple ways of play, even some games that are so stupid that I wonder how they ever got in, like war? I mean, that literally involves no strategy whatsoever. Jokes aside, the quality of the games is really good. Even if I don't like all of the games personally, the games that I'm showing footage of are mostly just the games that I thought were the coolest. Obviously, I didn't want to show every single game because that would be super boring and this review would drag on for way too long. But I think the way that things flow, the super fast loading screens, the snappy pace of the games allows for a really polished experience. The variety of multiplayer options, including taking advantage of the Switch being a portable console, as well as having a guest pass on the eShop that allows even people that don't own the game to be able to play some of the selection of minigames for free. That's a really cool option, because it means that if you're like me and you don't know anyone else who is dumb enough to rent this from Gamefly, then you can have people who just simply have a Switch play a couple of the games with you. And that's really cool. I wish all Switch games would do that. Wouldn't it be cool if Super Smash Bros. Ultimate had a mode like that? This game is actually relatively cheap by first party Nintendo standards. I believe the standard price is actually about $40, which is cheaper than the average Nintendo Switch game. Most of them go for about $60 nowadays because we all know people want to do highway robbery. And I would say, I would say that due to the immense amount of fun that can be had either with friends or by yourself, I think this game is worth a buy. I don't think you should be like me and rent it from Gamefly because you're a skeptic. I think you should just put in all the money and just go for it with everything you've got. Now, the one thing I would say to potentially discourage people from playing this is that there are quite a lot of games that you don't really need this game to play. Like, I'm sure checker and chess sets are a dime a dozen nowadays, so you could probably just get one of those, assuming you don't already have them, and assuming they're not coming bundled with, like, every PC ever, which, you know, Klondike comes with PC. Unless things have changed since the old days. And <laughs> if you have a sister like mine who's like, Paul, why are you playing checkers with an opponent? Have you really gotten to the bottom of the barrel? <laughs> then you might also want to skip out if people are like, why are you playing these games with a CPU rather than just asking someone to play with you? If you're alone, though, I still think there's a good enough variety to keep you entertained, as there are solitaire-based games, and there are AI opponents that get progressively harder, as you go along. Not all of the games are winners, but I think that's the point. They wanted to make sure that all of the games were accessible to as many demographics as possible. So in that respect, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics really succeeds. Besides the mixed quality of the game, the only other major complaint I have to say about the games as a whole is that the cursor sometimes moves way too slow in games that involve you picking a card or a tile, such as Klondike and Mahjong Solitaire. A lot of times I feel like I was denied the three-star rating in Mahjong because my cursor would move at a snail's pace when I wanted to quickly zoom across the screen. Thankfully, I played this game pretty much exclusively in handheld mode, so that wasn't too much of an issue. But then it wasn't until I was playing the piano that I figured out that you could have two fingers on the Switch's screen at once. 
So yay for me. Also, if it seems like I'm going on a tangent, it's because it's really hard to review a game with this much content. But this might be the kind of game that you would um, want to be careful of if you're the type that needs reading glasses. As even when I was playing this on the big screen, I still had trouble seeing some of the letters. Maybe it was because I had been staring at a screen for too long because I don't, I don't really use reading glasses like at all. So I don't know what's going on there. But just saying, if I have trouble seeing things on a big TV screen, you can bet that people with presbyopia are going to have trouble viewing it in handheld mode. So because this came out in 2020, it's kind of complicated to give a score. And honestly, the whole scoring system is all just a joke to make fun of the American term for perfect vision. So don't take it too seriously. But I think I would have to give this probably a 16 out of 20. It's a really good way of presenting these mini games, even if not all the mini games are great. And I think the variety of options, the portable nature of the Switch, the fact that it fulfilled that Wii U tech demo makes this worth the price of admission. Now, if I were to personally rate it based on my enjoyment of all the games, it would probably be close to more like a 14 out of 20. But still a very high recommendation, and definitely a game that I don't think you should rent. I definitely think you should either buy this or wait for it to go on sale. But considering that it's already on sale, compared to the average first party Nintendo title, you should just go for it. If you have any age group in your family, you're going to have a good time. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If there's anything I missed, please leave it in the comment section. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and I hope that these board games will help you find something cool to do in the summertime. Bye-bye.